Hello Space Cats. You might have noticed that this video is a little bit different from my usual videos. And that is because I'm at Jay on the Beach in Marbella, Spain. This is a conference where developers and big data technology gathers together from all over the world to discuss these important topics. You might be wondering what on earth I'm doing here. Well, I'll be giving a talk on big data in astronomy, of course. Remember the image of the supermassive black hole? Yeah, I know you're probably sick of it already, but just bear with me. That single image contains five petabytes of data. That's like 5,000 terabytes of data. It's more data than the New York Stock Exchange produces in 13 years. It's so much data that if you were to upload it, it would take you 44 years on a standard internet connection, and then another 22 years to download it. So it's no wonder that the Event Horizon Telescope people decided to load it all up on hard drives, hundreds of them, and then transport them by plane, which was much quicker. And these are some of the big problems that big data in astronomy is facing. At the European Space Agency, I work on the Euclid mission, which is a space-based telescope designed to measure the dark universe, dark matter and dark energy. Euclid won't launch until 2022, but over the six years that it will be operational, it will observe a third of the entire sky. That's a trillion times larger area than that black hole. It will generate 10 petabytes of raw astronomical data. That's 10,000 terabytes of data. Big data means different things to different people. In space science, 10 petabytes of data is a huge amount of data because we need to download it from space. In space missions, every megabyte of data is super precious because it's super expensive to produce. We have to build the spacecraft to go to space and we have to have the infrastructure to download the data from outer space. And we can't download the data at any time we like we need to wait until the spacecraft are directly above a radio antenna. And at ESA, we have three deep space antenna. These are distributed over Australia, Spain, and Argentina. Scientists who want to use big data will not be able to download all of it. It's just too big. Instead, new innovative ways are being developed to deal with the data. Things like bringing the code to the data. At ESA, we'd store all of our data on site and scientists could upload their code to ESA, run it locally there where all the data is stored. Ground-based telescopes can be connected by wires and this means that it can afford to go much larger in data volume. LSST is a telescope being developed in Chile that wants to observe transient objects, things like supernova and asteroids. And to do this, they need to be very, very quick. And so LSST will observe the entire sky every three nights. And every night it will produce 15 terabytes of data. By 2033, SKA, a square kilometer array of radio telescopes, will have produced more than 200 million petabytes of data. Its data rate is more than the entire internet produces. Even with current plans to throw away 98% of that data, they will still be producing 2,000 terabytes per night, which is way, way, way too much than we can currently handle. Very soon, people will no longer be fighting over data. Instead, data will be fighting over us to analyze them. Scientists are already hard at work developing new tools to deal with this big surge in data. So let me know in the comment section below what you think about big data in astronomy and if you've got any ideas for us to deal with it. As always, if you enjoyed my video, make sure you like, share and subscribe.